Good morning, everyone. Greetings of the day. Today's speaker, respected Dr. Harpreet Eri Singh, ma'am, all the young budding professionals of Srinivas University, my team, Team Udan, a warm good morning to everyone. We all are gathered on this virtual platform for a session on leadership by prominent industry leader, Dr. Harpreet Eri Singh. Presently serving as the president of the Harps Foundation, she is also the executive director of Air India. When it comes to leadership in the aviation industry, she has left no stone unturned in standing and representing the women professionals in the industry. She is the first ever woman CEO, served as the CEO for Alliance Air. She is also the president of IWPA, that is International Women professional in aviation and aerospace. She was rewarded with the Bharat Ratna Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam Excellence Award in the year 2020. She has contributed towards a glorifying aviation industry in India. We are privileged to have you here, ma'am. It is of course a blessing for all the interns to be a part of your session on leadership. We welcome you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for the very kind words and the kind introduction. So, Let's not waste time and begin uh, straight at the subject, because I think, uh, Subhashish, you wanted me to cover a little bit about leadership, and then we move on to uh, the career avenues, as well as the challenges that you may face today. So we will keep some time for the question and answers. And uh, But before I begin, I just wanted to share with you that I'm a person who has risen purely due hard work commitment, integrity, and loyalty to whichever organization I've worked for. And it's not that I've not faced adversity. I've faced adversity at the highest level. But you still see me here smiling and talking to all of you. And I think that is what we need to learn because life itself is your biggest teacher. And if you can imbibe every action, every you know movement around you and learn from that itself, life is teaching you how to move on in challenging environments. And aviation is definitely one which is a challenging environment. Having said that, it's also very simple, very easy, very uh, fun loving. And you know, if you're really passionate about a career in aviation, it is something that will take you in good stead. It is challenging at times, but it is also something highly enjoyable. And if you're really passionate, you will find a way I started off as a pilot and changed my career dimension so many times because aviation is quite vast and you can grow in different directions. So sometimes you may find you begin a certain way and then you just sidestep or you do something different. So I started as a pilot, then landed up as an instructor, then landed up as an instructor for pilots, for ground handlers, for cabin crew, then grew in management of training, then became a quality head and I was involved in processes and policies and writing of SOPs, standardization, making sure that safety is not compromised. I was heading the quality department for years and started then the environment and in operational efficiency side, got into fuel management, got into how to cut costs, how to make sure that revenue is not lost. And so when you look at the various dimensions, uh, there's so much to learn from each area, right? And then along with the technical training, I was a human factors and CRM facilitator. At that time, it was brand new. How to get the crew to coordinate in a crisis, how to do, uh, you know, if there's an emergency on board, how to deal with it. So these kind of subjects, uh, at times you may feel this is not my area. Why I'm telling you all this is because in the Department of Flight Safety, there's a lot of monitoring, a lot of audits, a lot of checking to ensure compliances are in place. We want to keep our passengers safe, et cetera, et cetera. And then I grew into the CEO position, which is uh, of Alliance Air. And I had a lot of good experience running an airline during the challenging time of COVID. So actually, uh, the opportunity that sometimes you get to learn in an industry of aviation, when you do multiple different roles, can be all challenging in different ways. But if you love aviation and you will really love what you do, you will find a way to absorb and to pick up new skills, okay? Now I will just uh, share my few slides, which I have prepared basically simply to go through a little flow with what we want to cover, especially when it comes to leadership. 
because I've always believed that every person is a leader from within. He only hasn't, he or she has not recognized it. That is the only difference at times. I think the biggest function of a leader in whichever job function you may be, and I'm not only talking of leadership as a CEO, I'm talking of a leadership at whatever management role you may be assigned. You will always be finding these holes. You'll be finding these gaps. And a good leader is the one who knows how to fill these gaps and how to do it in a way that it is smooth, right? So you will have big holes, you will have small ones, you will have different colors, you will have different ways of dealing with those gaps in your industry. How are you going to make sure that your team comes together, that everyone together is able to plug the gaps and ensure that we get the positive result? Firstly, what does a leader do to provide clear and compelling direction? If the leader doesn't know what is required to be done, then he cannot give a clear direction. And when there is no clear and compelling direction, the team doesn't know what to do. So you may have the most brilliant people in the team, but you do not have that leader to give that sense of direction. So for me, that's really important to have that. So you have to understand to the extent that make the, the lowest person in the chain and lowest could be in terms of knowledge. Sometimes your number two, number three itself may not be having that knowledge. You have to find the weakest link in, this, in your group and you have to make sure that that person also understands. Once everybody is on the same page, only then you can deliver in a, in a consistent manner, in a way that you can standardize and the way that you can actually get the results. The other thing is once everyone has understood what to do, they really have the knowledge, they know why you're doing what you're doing. The other very important and very close to my heart is ethical and civic minded. In fact, the entire Harps Foundation was started on this logic of business ethics and value systems. You cannot be pulling down somebody else to show that you are better. You can do better than them by innovating, by strategizing, but encouraging everybody, I've always believed there's enough space for everyone. Healthy competition actually triggers better movement towards improving the world because people are then always innovating. People are trying to strategize. People are trying to develop ways. But be ethical, be civic-minded, do something which is good, not just for the business, but it is good for the country. It is good for the world. It is good for humanity. It is good for the environment. Once you're basically civic-minded and ethical in principle, you will find you harness a lot of support. You'll get support from the governments. You'll get support from other countries if required. So your basic concept should not be that, how do I cheat others and make my way forward? Your basic concept should be, how do I involve everybody? How do I stay ethical? How do I use my value systems and yet succeed? It's a great myth that people have that you need to be devious and you need to be manipulative to succeed. I'm a living example of someone who has never cheated, who has never taken any bribe, who has never spoken ill of people. What I could not say in front of them, I will never say behind them. You know, there are certain guidelines that you have to follow. You can have a healthy criticism, but that doesn't mean that you back you, you waste such, deplete yourself and you're not able to move forward. Rather, if you have a difference of view, you discuss it, come to the common table, you can have uh, agreement to disagree. Fine, there, are, there will be times that everybody doesn't think like you, but then you see what, what is good for your company. Sometimes you may have to take a back seat. Never mind, it's okay. But there will be other opportunities where you will be given the front seat. This is my simple slide on the leadership success triangle and why I've put my name there because you won't find this in any book. This is created by me. So you would have a lot of reference on IQ, which is of course not my, this is I've copied the IQ and EQ part, but I've linked it in a different way. That is where it is unique. In any job that you take finally, whether it's a pilot's role or it is a management role or a finance or ground or engineering role. 
Of course, you apply your intelligence quotient. There's no doubt about that. That is your fundamental. Without the basic knowledge, without the basic skills, you will not be able to deliver your function correctly. So you need to make sure that you really know your subject. And aviation is a highly safety sensitive area of work. And you really need to focus on knowing everything properly and consistently and keeping yourself updated because things are changing all the time. So this is very important. Now comes the second element, which I focus a lot on, which is the emotional quotient. In any organization, if you really want to be a true leader, and a leader means everyone is a leader, not just a leader with a follower, right? A true leader actually creates more leaders. So when you're looking at leadership in that context, and you look at the emotional quotient, the vibrations that you sprint to your people around you, the feelings and the experiences that you share together, that you work together as a team, that you motivate them, that you connect to them, that you understand their problems, that you're there for them. You know, you're always there standing beside them. This is what is the EQ part. So sometimes you will have leaders who have so much of intelligence, but they just don't have the emotional connect. And because of that, they just cannot be successful. If you want to be successful as a leader, you have to have skills of compassion, skills of understanding, of emotionally being able to connect to your team. Otherwise, they will not listen to you. They will not follow you. They will, in fact, hate you from within for having over expectation, for demanding too much. And you will be most criticized and you will be upset and they will be upset. And basically, it would be due to these re uh, reasons that you will not be able to deliver. So there's a lot of focus which is required and you must build these skills. Maybe sometime later ever if some courses come up, there's a technique on how to do it. It's not just talking. There's, there's practical ways in how you can develop emotional quotient, how you can connect these, two, right? And the third one, which is my very own, my personal one, which I call the PSQ, which is the pure soul quotient. Unless you look at everyone around you without ego, just treating them as pure souls. That means it's not that I'm a CEO, so I'm some, someone very great. And the guy who's the lowest person in the chain, who is typing or who's opening the doors, who's the driver or he's the lift man and he is nothing. The moment you start thinking like that, you lose the team, right? So firstly, you look at everyone with equality, looking at everyone that we are all the same. We are only pure souls. We have come here to do our worldly duties. We may be doing a different role in the drama on the world stage that today I'm doing this role, today somebody else is doing that role. And when I look at it in a detached manner, and then every goal that I want to achieve, I look at it with pure intention. That means the objective is pure. You're not trying to harm anyone. You're not trying to kill your competition. You're not trying to uh, you know, destroy people around you just so that you can climb the ladder. When you do these things in a pure manner and you can connect it to your IQ, EQ, automatically you're successful. Because this is the real meaning of success. And this is what will sustain you in the long run. You may have temporary success here and there by cutting other people out, but remember, that is not the true success. Some of you are very young and you may not relate to this. But as you mature, you will find that this actually is much more important. And if some of you are already recognizing it, then it is wonderful because then you're already on the great, unique, noble path of success, right? Now, using the same principles, I applied this when I was CEO uh, during the COVID time. First, I was the chief of flight safety in Air India when COVID started. And I remember we had to do at least 180 safety risk assessments, which was unbelievable that we could do for so many airports where we've never flown before. And you're trying to do evacuation from all over the world in the thick of COVID with fear everywhere. People are not wanting to operate because they feel that they themselves are at risk. And to manage this whole environment, you cannot do it without this combination of IQ, EQ, and PSQ. And when I look back on this journey of mine, I feel I really evolved. 
because I learned how to deal with the crisis. I was involved with the first flight that went into Wuhan, uh, into China, where there was so much of fear, so much of you know uh, worries on what will happen. And we made a success out of it due to the good team management and due to doing everything with a pure intention, which really helps people to work together. Secondly, when I was CEO of Alliance Air, in the crisis, you find opportunities of even business management goals being met, right? Like we did a lot of focus on cargo, which Alliance Air was never doing in the past. We were delivering vaccines to the smaller cities. We changed our full aircraft configuration. We got all the regulatory approvals, but we moved in a direction because sometimes the crisis pushes you as a catalyst of change. So you use your IQ, you use your intelligence to see what would work. Then you use your emotional quotient to see how to connect it. Because unless your team is with you, they're not going to do it because they are themselves scared for their lives. I would hear everyday phone calls, I can't step out, I can't do this, I'm so scared. That's when I started this prayer channel called Universal Prayers, through the hops. And that's why I believe in this so much, because I've actually experienced it. I began uh, the 4.30 to 5 a.m. meditations, where we would just multi-faith. It is anybody can join. And whatever belief you have, we kept changing the prayers from different religions, different faiths, and we kept focusing on inner strength. And I kept telling them, it is the fear that is going to drag you into this COVID problem. The, get rid of that fear. You just think that you have the necessary strength, you have the necessary determination, motivation to succeed, and you will. And with that, we not only uh, moved vaccines all over the country to the smallest locations, we also saved a lot of lives with organ transplants, you know, by delaying flights, taking intelligent decisions, but involving the passengers along. And one more example I would share with you with prices was when I was in my past role as an emergency response director. I handled two accidents myself as the ERD, and I had conceptualized something known as Angels of Air India. And the word angel is somebody who comes and is willing to help without expecting anything in return. I created a team of more than 1,000 volunteers. And during both these accidents, these are the teams that did maximum work. And although the accidents were unfortunate and definitely uh, unpardonable in a, in a way, but the emergency response activity that happened after that was praised by one and all. We even got a letter of appreciation from the investigation authorities and the kind of good work that was done in dealing with the crisis. So what I'm trying to tell you is all these leadership techniques, just remember the three fundamentals. You must have the knowledge, the IQ. You must know what you're doing. Without that, you can't even begin. Once you know what is to be done, then you have to focus on the EQ. And all this can only happen if the intent is pure. And when you treat everyone as your equals, you will then encourage them to give you genuine feedback. You will get real ground level feedback. Otherwise, they will hesitate to open up. You will not get the desired result. So it's very important to combine these three and then to work towards the ladder of success. So with this, I would like to end this little presentation. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning, Devansh. First of all, thank you for showing us a lot of untaken paths which we can work on and walk on. Uh, I would like to ask upon a path which you said is less taken, the aviation law. Yes. So please tell us about more about aviation law and how can we, you know, work for it or you know, increase the people walk on it. Like we do had aviation law as a subject in our fifth semester where we spoke about airworthiness, uh, DGC right. and what more. Mm. But what I'm talking about aviation law is that you get a full degree in aviation law. Like as a subject, of course, it's good to have the basic knowledge. Like if you go around in the country or you try to Google how many um, people have actually taken a degree in aviation law and are allowed by the law to practice in aviation, I find this is the area where it's a little weak. And so for those who are interested can do it because the number of legal cases are increasing a lot whether it is uh, linked to aircraft acquisition, whether it is linked to leasing of planes and returning of planes and whether they came in the same condition that they were leased. And there are a lot of legal issues involved. 
Then there are also a lot of uh, the general aviation related employee issues with, uh, with pilots, with engineers, because there's a lot of technicality uh, of the regulation and versus the, you know, like I'll give you a simple example. Like if there's a legal law that, you know, you cannot have alcohol before you take a flight, which for safety standards, everybody widely accepts. Uh, but then there was once in a while a pilot, like, you know, he was having a homeopathic medicine and or perfume usage and it shows up as if it is alcohol now there is nothing in the legal gambit that we could do to help that crew we don't know what's the truth in the matter the medicine people will say we don't know about it that's not our problem and when the regulator says no he has to go and fight in the court the court will say that we don't have a law on this we need an aviation lawyer and everybody is looking around who is this aviation lawyer like i'm, I'm just giving this example and this is like a very personal, uh, like one captain's issue, right? You have big organizational issues. Now, even post an accident or even a small incident, the insurance claims, everybody's putting legal cases against each other. And then the settling of those claims, the settling of the issues, you need the aviation expertise to deal with those issues in a very detailed, specific manner. So these are just a few cases, but I really feel we need good uh, and the combination of insurance understanding, law understanding, leasing, and uh, the other technicalities, you can have a good career path because there are not too many people there. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah. Right, perfect. Uh, we'll take um, our final question from Harriet. Harriet, uh, you may come on the mic. Thank you. Uh, hi, ma'am. Harriet here. Uh, my question was like, uh, you have explored a lot of different paths in aviation like what made you change your uh, things like continuously what it's like um, the mickey mouse game that god plays with me everybody has a different fear <laughs> i said i answered that question by saying the mickey mouse game that god plays with me is one of the major reasons but the other is my own joy in learning from others something new don't be satisfied with what you're doing you'll become such a bore you know so diversified but that's i'm not saying there's a right or wrong here because some people enjoy just specializing in just one thing and making that their core which is also very important and which is also very appreciated but along with one core if you diversify a bit like when i got into quality and safety the good part was i learned every department every area i was auditing so i was uh, forcibly learning areas which i did not even understand so it gave me the full 360 view of the entire operation of the organization. So there is an advantage in diversification. There is also an advantage in uh, staying where you are, but then you will grow to the highest in that one area. You'll not become CEO. Remember that. 